Hi, welcome to Spoiler Lab. A crazy scientist accidentally shrunk his son and nearly ate him along with his breakfast cereal. Today we will recap the story of the 1989 movie Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. The story takes place in a small American town. The Zelinsky family lives on a quiet street, father Wayne, mother Diane, and two children, teenage girl Amy and boy Nick. Wayne is a genius scientist obsessed with his inventions. Nick imitates him in everything, and Diane is irritated by her husband's quirks. Because of this, the couple often quarrels. In the morning, the letter carrier brings them letters, and the Zelinsky family dog, named Quark, carries them into the house. In the meantime, Amy makes breakfast and exchanges the latest gossip with her friend over the phone. Tonight, the girl is going to a dance with a guy she's liked for a long time. But now Amy has to keep an eye on Nick, who at this moment is inventing a machine for disappearing objects. The thing is, the Zelinsky couple have had another fight, and Diane has gone to her mother's house. The children miss her and wait for her to come home. Breakfast is ready, and Amy alerts her father about it with a special communication machine. Wayne is right now in the attic working on his object reduction device. The man isn't in a hurry for breakfast, he needs a few more minutes to finish the machine. He operates a welding torch and makes a lot of noise. He causes the sleepy man next door named Russell Thompson to jump out of bed and run to the window. Russell yells at Wayne to stop making noise and let him sleep, because it is Saturday morning. Russell then bangs his head against the window frame and refuses to understand his neighbor's quirks. Russell's wife, named May, tries to calm her husband down, but he gets dressed and runs out into the yard, wanting to deal with Zelinsky. In the yard, Russell falls into a trap set by his youngest son Ron. The man falls on the lawn and tries to remove a rubber-tipped arrow from his forehead, but it is stuck with superglue. Thompson's wife runs into the house to save her husband's forehead. In the meantime, Nick walks into Wayne's workshop and proudly shows his father his invention. But Wayne doesn't care about the kid, he's too engrossed in his machine. Frustrated, Nick goes downstairs, and Wayne opens all the valves of the machine and begins testing. He plans to shrink an apple with a laser. The machine finds the object, but instead of shrinking, the laser tears the apple into small pieces. Wayne collapses onto the couch in exhaustion, and Quark licks the mashed apple off his face. Russell manages to get rid of the arrow. In the hallway, he meets his eldest son, also named Russell, named after his father. The man announces that their family is going fishing today, but Russ Jr. isn't thrilled with the news, he's not a fan of fishing. Besides, the boy was kicked off the soccer team yesterday. All this depresses Russell Sr. The man thinks that all his problems come from the fact that his son is too short in stature. Meanwhile, Amy serves her father and Nick burnt toast for breakfast. The boy immediately refuses and quietly eats cookies from under the table. Wayne pays no attention to the children and talks only about his machine. Amy reminds her father that he has an inventor's conference at the research center starting in 15 minutes. The man immediately grabs his papers and hurries to his car. But suddenly the phone rings. It's Diane calling. She's coming home soon. Wayne promises his wife that things will change for the better after the conference. After finishing the conversation, Wayne instructs the children to clean up the house and mow the lawn. Nick and his friend go to the backyard and he offers the boy to mow the lawn for him. He is not eager to work in someone else's yard, but suddenly sees that the lawnmower is remote controlled. The boy gets excited and promises to do this fascinating work later, because now he has a meeting scheduled. Russell Sr. is actively getting ready to go fishing in his backyard. Ron is bored with helping his father, and he is looking for someone to play baseball with. The boy comes to the fence and offers Nick Zalinski to play with him, but Nick refuses. The boys exchange profanities and go their separate ways. Amy turns on the music and starts mopping the floor like her father told her to. At this time, Russ Jr. carries the fishing equipment into the van and notices Amy dancing in the window. The boy can't take his eyes off the girl. Russell Sr. notices this and leads his son into the barn. Here he brings up the uncomfortable topic of Russ Jr.'s short stature and suggests that he should exercise with a heavy barbell to get strong. The boy looks at his father bewildered and says he's not interested. He has not yet decided on a hobby, but his father wants to force his opinion. Frustrated by his son's behavior, Russell Sr. takes out his hidden cigarettes and plans to smoke, but his wife prevents this attempt. The two adults gather their things and load them into the van, but Ron decides to play baseball by himself after all. In doing so, he accidentally breaks a window in Zelinsky's attic with the ball. Once in Wayne's lab, the ball triggers the shrinking machine, gets stuck in it, and activates the laser. Russ Jr. notices his brother's mischief and forcibly takes him to apologize to Zelinsky. Ron tries to leave, but his older brother won't let him. Suddenly, Wayne's machine starts working properly, thanks to the ball. The laser beam hits the couch and the inventor's chair and shrinks them a thousand times. Nick and Amy come out to meet the uninvited guests, and Ron reluctantly admits that he broke the window. Amy has a house to clean, so she wants to end the argument as soon as possible and asks Nick to give Ron his ball. The two boys make their way up to the attic, 
at which point the laser goes off once again. At the conference, Wayne tells his colleagues about his invention, but cannot yet prove that his machine works. The scientists laugh him off and leave the room. Only one scientist supports Wayne, but this is no consolation to the man. He packs his things and goes home upset. Meanwhile, Amy and Russ also go up to the attic to check on their little brothers. The boys aren't there, but the laser is working properly. It targets the teenagers and shrinks them. Amy and Russ look around and suddenly notice the younger brothers. It turns out that they are all smaller than insects. Quark's barking is deafening to them now. The children can do nothing to help themselves and decide to wait for Wayne to arrive, sitting on his shrunken couch. Soon the man appears on the doorstep and calls out to the children. Quark barks to lure Wayne into the attic. The children immediately move the couch to the door so that the man does not crush them, and in the process notice that they have become smaller than a fly. At this point, the baseball rolls off the machine and shuts it down. Wayne walks around the attic, but he can't hear the screams of the children, who are waving their hands and asking for help. The man tries to sit on his couch, but falls to the floor as the furniture has shrunk. The children realize that they are too small and no one can hear their cries. Wayne, on the other hand, inspects his machine and is suddenly distraught. The man angrily smashes his machine, unaware that it is working. Parts fly in all directions, and the children are forced to run away in order to avoid being crushed. However, Wayne immediately takes a broom and sweeps away all the parts that have fallen off into a pile. The children do not have time to run away, and the man sweeps them up on a dustpan with the garbage and then throws them in a bucket. So, the children end up in the garbage bag, which Wayne immediately ties up and takes to the backyard. The miraculously unscathed children cut the bag open with a piece of glass and look around. The grass has gotten too tall for them and the distance to the house is enormous. Ron is nervous and wants to go back to his house to go fishing. But Amy says that in the current situation, he's only good for bait. Ron snaps back and rolls to the ground on a blade of grass. The others follow him. The Zelinsky children are convinced that Wayne will help them become normal-sized again, so they all decide to stick together despite Ron's protests. Suddenly, a butterfly flies over the children, which appears to them to be a huge pterodactyl. This helps Nick calculate that their height is less than an inch, and they can reach home only by nightfall, if they are lucky. The children set off on their journey. Meanwhile, Diane returns home. She works as a real estate agent and happily informs her husband that she has sold another house. The buyer should be stopping by soon. Wayne's news is not as happy, but the couple is not upset. The only thing they don't understand is where the children have gone. The children continue on their way home and are frightened by a toy dinosaur that Nick lost earlier in the grass. Suddenly, the group arrives at a river, but in fact it is only a dog puddle. The children can't go any further, so they start calling for Quark to take them home. Nick assures them that the dogs have good hearing and Quark will hear them whistle. But in order to jump on the dog, they have to climb to a higher place, and the boys start climbing up the stem of a flower. Quark approaches the children, but suddenly the Thompson's cat runs into Zelinsky's yard. The cat scares Quark and chases him into the house, at which point Nick falls into the core of the flower. Diane goes out into the yard to look for the children, and she is hailed by May. The woman discovers that the neighbor's children are missing, too, but so far, no one panics. Suddenly, the children hear a loud buzzing sound and soon see a swarm of bees. One of the bees lands on the flower on which Nick is sitting. To save the boy, Russ jumps onto the bee's back and grabs Nick. Startled, the bee takes off with the boys and flies all over the yard. The boys grab on tight and yell for help, but no one hears them. Wayne goes out into the yard and the bee starts flying around him. The man grabs a nearby bat and tries to drive the annoying insect away, unaware that the two boys are sitting on his back. The bee flies off into the grass, and Wayne looks at the baseball bat with wonder. It's not clear how it got there, since his kids don't play baseball. Suddenly Wayne realizes something and goes to the attic. He drops to his knees and finds his shrunken furniture. The man is thrilled to find his machine working, but immediately it becomes clear to him why the children are nowhere to be seen. They have simply shrunk. Wayne begins to scrutinize the floor and stares into the broom. The man realizes that he has swept the children along with the trash and goes to the backyard. He notices the cut on the garbage bag. Startled, Wayne tries to walk home over the grass, but suddenly realizes that the kids might be in it. Then he climbs the fence. The neighbors observe Wayne's strange actions in bewilderment. Russ Jr. and Nick manage to jump off the bee. Now the boys come to their senses and shake off the pollen. They go in search of Ron and Amy. Meanwhile, Ron threatens the girl that her whole family will go to jail for the reduction. But Amy declares that her father will get fabulously rich when he fixes the machine. This changes Ron's attitude toward the situation, and he confesses his love to the Zalinsky family and follows Amy. Wayne arms himself with a magnifying glass and explores the backyard on stilts. As he does so, he accidentally clips the irrigation hose and the yard begins to flood. Wayne tries to dump the hose, but stumbles and falls on the clothes drying ropes. In that position, he is spotted by Diane's customers, who have come to close the deal. 
Wayne chases them off the lawn and turns off the water. The kids in the grass try to hide from the huge water droplets and are finally reunited. But one of the drops knocks Amy off her feet, and the girl falls into a puddle. Russ immediately jumps in after her and tries to find the girl in the muddy water. Soon the boy succeeds. He pulls the emotionless Amy out of the puddle and starts giving her CPR. The girl regains consciousness and clears her throat. Wayne assembles a strange suspended frame that allows him to explore the grass without stepping on it. In this position, he continues his search. Some friends of the Thompsons drive up to the house so they can go fishing together. Russell Sr. needs to explain why his family is not going, but he is afraid to tell the truth. The man awkwardly lies to his friend that May is not feeling well and goes home to wait for the children to return. Meanwhile, the children wash off the dirt, socialize, and a friendship develops between them. They realize they have made it to the center of the yard and continue on their way. The kids mention food, for they are already very hungry. Suddenly they notice the brownie that Nick dropped earlier. It now seems huge to the children, and they proceed to eat it. Immediately an ant crawls up to the pastry, and the children are frightened and hide. Nick realizes that it would be easy to ride this ant home if someone could saddle it. The kids rush toward the insect screaming and take turns trying to jump on its back. But only Ani succeeds in taming the ant, and she feeds it a piece of cake and makes it follow her. Quark decides to play with the frame on which Wayne is hanging and makes him spin. He tumbles awkwardly and falls into his neighbor's pool. At this point, the Thompsons call the police to organize a search for the children. The kids manage to saddle the ant and make it walk forward by waving a piece of treat in front of its head. The cops question the Thompsons and do not believe that the children ran away for nothing. Russell Sr. begins to rethink his behavior toward the children and worries that he wasn't a good enough father. Zalinski also calls the police. Before the cops arrive, Wayne decides to tell his wife what really happened to the children. For the sake of argument, he shows Diane the shrunken couch. At first the woman is happy that Wayne's invention works, but soon panics that her husband has shrunk the children. During a visit from the police, Diane becomes overwhelmed and collapses. Along the way, Ron develops a strong sympathy for the ant and decides that the insect should be let go so its family doesn't have to worry about it. The children pet the ant, thank it, and walk away from it. As darkness falls, the Zalinskis continue their search for the children. They now hover together in Wayne's contraption and examine the grass. Russell Sr. walks out on the doorstep and lights a cigarette, not having endured the stress. He notices the Zalinski couple in an odd position and throws the butt into their yard. The butt falls into the grass next to the children. Ron immediately decides to find a use for it. He finds a suitable plant, lights it, and gets a kind of torch. The others follow his example. Diane breaks down and asks her husband to tell the Thompsons everything. They do not believe a word of it. Then Wayne suggests that they look at his shrunken couch under a microscope. This convinces May, but Russell Sr. remains adamant and takes his wife home. There he calls the police again and hopes for the best. Eventually, night falls. The kids fail to make their way home, but find a piece of Lego in the grass. The kids decide to spend the night in it. The ant also stays with them for the night. Amy and Russ Jr. not only manage to become friends but also become fond of each other, so the teens begin a heartfelt nighttime conversation. Amy no longer regrets not going to the dance with the other boy. The Zalinskis realize that looking for the kids in the dark is useless. They sit down on their doorstep and realize that work is not so important in their lives. Family is far more precious. After an exchange of affection, Wayne sets off to fix his machine throughout the night. Diane feels like she won't sleep either, since her daughter is spending the night with Russ Jr. Meanwhile, Amy asks why Russell Jr. has never stopped by to visit them. Turns out the boy has been in love with her for a long time and was shy. After these words, Amy kisses Russ, but the moment is spoiled by a scorpion who tries to attack the children. Everyone but Ron manages to escape. Then Russell runs to the aid of his younger brother and throws burning torches into the scorpion's back. Thanks to this, Ron manages to get out of the Lego, but the scorpion is already ready for a decisive blow. Suddenly the ant runs up to the scorpion and bites his leg. This distracts the fiend away from Ron. Now it is necessary to help the ant, with whom the scorpion has engaged in a merciless fight. The boys attack the fiend with sticks and pebbles. He tosses the ant aside and engages in another fight. Finally, the sticks the children throw injure the scorpion, and he scurries away. The children immediately run to the ant and see that it is seriously wounded. The children pet their friend and say goodbye to him. Overnight, Wayne manages to assemble the machine. In the morning, Diane looks at her sleeping husband with a tender smile and admires him. The children wake up in the Lego piece and prepare to continue on their way. Suddenly, Nick's friend, who was impressed with the lawnmower the day before, arrives at Zalinski's house. Today, the boy decides to take up the cause. While listening loudly to music on his headphones, he turns on the lawnmower. The kids in the grass hear a suspicious noise, and soon Nick realizes what's waiting for them. The kids run in terror from the approaching lawnmower, but it's moving too fast. Luckily, they find a tunnel underground, it's a earthworm's hole. Here the friends decide to hide. 
At this time, the Zelensky couple also hear the sound of a lawnmower. They immediately rush to the backyard and yell at the boy to turn off the machine. But the music in his headphones makes it almost impossible for him to hear anything. The Zelenskys cannot trample on the lawn themselves, so they make signs that insistently beckon the boy toward them. He stops steering the lawnmower, but does not turn off the engine. The machine stops just above the hole where the children are hiding. The motor begins to suck them in. The children scream and grab hold of each other. Amy is the last one standing. She manages to hold on to the root of some plant with her legs, but the root breaks off and the children fly through the motor. At this point, Wayne finally takes the remote control away from the boy and shuts down the lawnmower. The kids fall to the ground among the cut grass, all of them unharmed. Suddenly, they see the faces of the Zelensky family, who are crouched next to them, but the parents don't notice or hear the children. Nick is almost desperate, but then Quark appears on the lawn. The children quickly grab hold of the dog's fur and tell him to go home. This time Quark isn't intimidated by the neighbor's cat and boldly walks in and jumps right onto the dinner table. Nick can't hold on, and plops down, right into his father's breakfast cereal, who decides to take a bite to eat. Wayne chases Quark away and doesn't notice Nick floundering in the plate under his nose. The man keeps eating and talks about how hard it is for the kids right now. The other kids get off Quark and run screaming toward Wayne's plate, but the parents don't notice. Suddenly the man scoops up a spoonful of breakfast along with Nick in it. Saying that they should be very careful, Wayne brings it to his mouth. At that moment, Quark bites him on the leg. This causes Wayne to lower his gaze to the spoon and see Nick there. The parents look at the boy through the magnifying glass and rejoice at their find. Nick points to the table, to where the other kids are standing. Diane immediately runs after the Thompsons. Everyone gathers in Wayne's lab, but the scientist can't figure out how to get the machine to work right. Then the adults point a magnifying glass at the children, and they use gestures to show the word baseball. Wayne immediately understands. Yesterday the ball partially blocked the laser when it flew into the window, and the machine worked. The experience remains to be repeated. Russell Sr. demands that the test be done on him first, and then enlarge the children. Wayne starts the machine, and Russell is reduced a thousandfold. May is immensely proud of him. Wayne immediately enlarges his neighbor and realizes that the procedure is safe. Now it's the children's turn. Before the enlargement, Russell Jr. manages to ask Amy to dance, the girl eagerly agrees. The children hold hands, and Wayne points the laser at them. The enlargement goes quickly and painlessly. The children immediately throw themselves into their parents' arms. Their adventures were beneficial to all, as the Zelenskys reconciled, Russell Sr. decided that it is not necessary to demand too much from his children, and peace reigned between the neighbors. The Thompsons now regularly go to the Zelenskys for dinners, where they serve enormous meals. So, what did you think of this movie? Leave it in the comments below and if you liked the video please like and subscribe for more movie recaps. See you next time.